So now if you'd be seated for a couple of moments. <clears throat> and I want you to read I want to, to read you a parable that's very familiar to all of you. Uh, the parable of the Pharisee and the publican or the tax collector. He then addressed the parable to those who were convicted, who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke the prayer to himself. What an interesting line. He spoke the prayer to himself. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, as even this tax collector is like. I fast twice a week. I do all wonderful, wonderful things. And the Pharisee went on praising himself and paying himself every compliment he could think of. And the publican beat his breast and said, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Many people find that parable very hard to understand, and I can see why. So if we put that parable for a moment or two in, in, into everyday language, and we'll see why it is hard to understand. So there's a man, if I said to you today, there's a person here in this parish, a man, who is a wonderful man. He's a knight of St. Columbus. He's a member of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. He goes to Mass each and every Sunday. And sometimes he goes on a weekday also. He's always been faithful to his, to his wife. He is very generous and kind. He's very generous to the church. And he's always willing to help. Any, anybody. But it's also somebody living down, down the road there who's anything but like that. He's, um, he's, a, he's a tax cheat. He certainly has no time for getting involved in the church. He rarely, if ever, darkens the door of, of the church. He's entirely selfish. Life is all about him. You know the amazing thing? Two, one day, for some unknown reason, the two of them come in here to the church and they kneel down for a few moments. And God was more impressed with the guy who rarely darkened the door and was a tax cheat and everything else you, you could imagine. And the guy who was living a good life, he didn't have near as much time for him. You'd say, are you out of your tiny mind? Surely that can't be true. And yet, that's exactly what the parable today is about. That is what Jesus said. So what, what was he really talking about? What did he really mean? Hmm? What did he really mean? What was the difference between the two of them? 
the thing the guy who came into church, the, the cheat, the tax cheat, and the guy who really darkened the door of the church, and knelt down and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I know I'm a bad person. What was the difference between the other guy who came in, very self-righteous, uh, thanking God for how wonderful he was? The difference is the publican or the tax collector or the guy who came in from down the road knew himself, knew himself, and was totally honest and truthful. And Jesus did not come to make us good, but to make us truthful, truthful about ourselves, who we really, really are. Now, if you want a good, a good example of somebody who is absolutely honest and truthful, and I met, I met somebody the other, the other day, and she was as straightforward and as honest and as truthful as you could imagine. And she said to me, Father, I want to tell you some, something. And I said, what is that? She said, I'm not boasting about it, but she said, I'm thanking God. And I said, why? Because she said, I'm 45 years sober. 45 years sober. You cannot meet a more truthful and honest person than a recovering alcoholic. Because they know and accept they have been a loser. And maybe they, can't, they still think they are a loser. And maybe a lot of people think she is a loser or he is a loser. But believe me, believe me, when you have the honesty and the truthfulness of somebody who is recovering, not just from alcohol, but from any, any addiction, you have an honest and a truthful person. And that's what we need to be this afternoon. You need to be honest as you kneel here before Jesus really and truly present here. That is not, that is not a symbol. That is not, that is not a sign. That is Jesus. And he's looking at each one of you at this moment. And he can see right into your heart. He can see right into my soul. And he knows me way better than I could ever know myself. And so the best way to approach Jesus, loving, faithful Jesus, is to just kneel there and say, it's Mary, it's Sue, it's Jim, it's Tony, it's Dennis, it's Dennis, Jesus. It's just me. Just there. Be absolutely honest and absolutely truthful. And try and look into your own hearts for a few moments and be absolutely honest and truthful. You're standing before Jesus. So there can be no baloney or no fake. You've got to be absolutely honest now. And if you're abs absolutely honest and truthful, about what you need to be forgiven for, you will be totally forgiven this afternoon. Because it is a fact. By the very fact that you decided, I don't know when, maybe yesterday, maybe on Sunday, or maybe this, this morning, or maybe 20 minutes ago, you were going to come here today, you were forgiven anyhow. If for someone known reason you didn't make it or you got sick in the way or you had an accident 
you would have been forgiven because you had the intention in your mind. You came because you felt, I'm in need of forgiveness. And so I want you now for a couple of for a couple of moments, just to kneel silently in front of Jesus and be honest and tell him, make your confession to him. You can't fool him. And get away from the idea of, I might have told a lie sometime, or I might have missed my morning prayers. Jesus isn't interested in is not interested in that whatsoever. But maybe you need to talk to him about the lack of forgiveness in in your life. That person in your life, or maybe there's a member of your family you haven't spoken to for years. And you've and you just will you cannot bring yourself to forgive them. So what are you doing here? this afternoon. If you can't forgive them, how can you expect Jesus to forgive you? Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. You cannot pray the Lord's Prayer. And that's a big, 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 big sin in many many people's lives. Maybe you're carrying an anger An anger does like a cancer inside you. That's, you know, growing all the time. Because if you don't get rid and you don't deal with that anger, it grows and it overtakes you and it possesses you. These are the kind of things you've got to bring to Jesus this this afternoon. So for a few moments now, I want you to kneel quietly. Open your heart. Open your heart to Jesus.